words from your sponsor. Uh, I, I forgot their books there. And there's some that uh, I highly recommend. Of course, something on Louis de Montfort, if you don't have one, there's a short one, Secret of Mary. One of my favorite books is there, and sometimes I give retreats on it, using it. It's called I Believe in Love by Father Jean. It's a French John, J Jean in English, Jean Delby. Uh, think of the Elba, Jean Delby, I Believe in Love. There's one of Mother Teresa, which I really like as well. Mother Teresa at uh, something the in the shadow of the cross. There's several good books. If you, if you ha don't have the one, um, there's a pink book there, very thin by Jacques Philippe. I mentioned before, Searching for and Maintaining Peace. Th that's, that's the first one you have to get. Um, but it's the one uh, uh, to protect your peace and so on. It's a, a foundation of spiritual life. But there are a number of good books there. Um, secondly, someone asked me about, um, so let me take something off. Um, the, the shrine of, of our Blessed Mother, it's a national shrine to Our Lady in Canada. And it's, it's um, Pope Pius X or something, uh, made our, like she's really um, Our Lady of Canada in a sense. But the shrine is, uh, okay, um, the place is called, in the French, it's Capital of Madeleine. Madeline's Cape in English. Madeline, the woman, like Madeline. Um, cap means cape. Cape of uh, Madeline. <laughs> oh, Our Lady there is called, in the French, Notre Dame du Cap. Our Lady of the Cape. Because there's a sort of a cape there. Uh, our, our, our Lady of the Cape. And it's halfway, so if, you, if this is Quebec City and this is Montreal, sort of halfway is a place called Trois in French, Three Rivers, Trois Rivières. With uh, Three Rivers. And so you, you, you get off the highway when you see, and then there's a town, and the edge of the town by the uh, St. Lawrence River is this uh, capital of Madeleine. Okay, someone asked me as well, I'm surprised I can remember these things. Because, uh, <laughs> you see, some people are old in age, some people are old in heart. I, I'm, I'm both. <laughs> so, you ask, I mentioned something from Catherine of Siena. There's, you can divide it into three pillars. I remember God taught her this. Jesus taught her it. Three pillars or two pillars. I, I simply make it two pillars. So, they, they, you, you have... The first pillar, is the, it's, it's a secondary one. It's not the main one, but it's the one that we, we have to begin here. We call it self-knowledge. Meaning, excuse me, the knowledge of myself. The knowledge of me, even though loved by God, made in His image and likeness, all of this wonderful thing. Because morally, I'm very weak. I'm a sinner. And without God's grace, I would fall. The knowledge of my weakness is what is my strength. Because, and, and so the knowledge of my poverty, my sinfulness. I, I constantly have to, to, to remind the seminarians what, 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 what they do, many of them are gifted. Great singers, good looking, great personality. I said, your gifts are not important. You know, recognize the deepest part of your sinner. Because what that does is, it makes you, in your sinfulness, like the little child, like a little child looking to mommy, looking to God. And, and, and this, the second one, is, is look at the awareness of Christ's love. The awareness, the looking at Christ's love. For you. That's the more important one. So we, we, we do what we, we do at Mass. Well, we, I be, we go to Mass, first thing we do, look, I, I, I confess to Almighty God, look, 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 I'm a sinner. Or before I receive communion, Lord, I'm not worthy. Now I'm in a, pers I'm in a perfect place. Now I receive the Lord. Now I, I focus on the union, the communion with the Lord in the Eucharist. But you always hold on to that sinfulness. If you lose that, you lose everything. Unless you become like, like uh, little children. So let me use another example. Um, the great uh, Dom, okay, Dom means abbot. Uh, he was an uh, Irish man, went to Belgium, became a, a monk there, and became the abbot of uh, several monasteries and so on. And he, he's blessed, and I don't know one day, I, I don't know if he's canonized yet. Um, his name is Dom um, Columba Marmion. 
And, and he was writing a letter of spiritual direction to a nun. And she was telling her, he said, you are always troubled by your sins. You're not like St. Paul. Paul gloried, like boasted of his weakness. Is when I'm weak, I'm strong. And what the seminarians do is, oh, I'm so gifted, I'm so special. You know, t- uh, you know they, they, they do it. I said, no, that, that's wrong. That's wrong. He said, I want to evangelize, I want to conquer the world, you know, because I, I, I have such a great intellect. That's not what saves. You, the awareness of how weak we are is our identity. And then the, the great, greater part is I'm loved by Jesus. But you lose this. You lose this. Okay. Someone asked me a specific question about um, the, the, the treasury of... Uh, let me hear right The tre- treasury of merits. So when we give something called indulgences, so um, the first eight days of uh, November, because it's a month of the dead, um, the church says if you go to a cemetery and then you pray for the dead and you say a few prayers for, for um, uh, uh, the Pope, like Our Father, Hail Mary, and then, and of, of course you receive the Eucharist maybe that day and uh, also uh, confession recently, then you, are, um, you can receive a plenary indulgence. And th- that means that the church applies is a, like, a, like a bank, as it were, of the merits of what Jesus has done, of what Our Lady and the saints and so on that God can use, right? Where does this come from? It comes from the church's teaching. Okay, so let me um, anticipate the next topic, Our Lady in New Testament. Before I talk about Lady in New Testament, I have to talk about the Bible in general. How do Catholics do theology, study God? We have three things. The Protestants, led by Luther, Luther made a huge mistake. He went with one. And the church has never done that. The church has existed 1,500 years before Luther, and he decides, I'm going to go do one because of his own personal experience. It's wrong. So let, let me... Um, when, when, when you and I try to understand the, 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 the truth... Um, we, we have two sources of revelation. The Bible, we call it scripture. We have tradition, which is the accumulation of uh, all the things. It, it's, uh, you know, scripture says, um, the Bible says, and the gospel says, uh, like Luke. Um, I've written these things down, but if, if, if everything Jesus were, uh, did uh, were, were written down, not all the books in, of, the, of the world could fill it. There's so much that Jesus taught that became a part of their life. Remember, the Bible then doesn't come, the New Testament doesn't come first. The New Testament were, were, were written like Paul, or one of the earliest, and different writers. And the church, and sorry, the Bible was, uh, sorry, the, the, the first community, they were already celebrating Mass, baptizing, before the, the New Testament ever came out. The Bible, the, New, or the, the second half of the Bible, the New Testament, beginning with Jesus and so on, came after the church existed and the early church was practicing. All of the church's life is, is what we call our um, tradition, our teachings, our, our way of doing things, the, the, the liturgy, all of that is part of our, the church fathers and so on, all of that is part of our, our tradition. So we know that there are two sources. It's a, it's a little bit like two taps from heaven. From one source, but it, from heaven, but, but, but it comes in, in two sources. One in a book, another in, in the church's life. And they're equal. And they complement one another. They mutually illuminate one another. And on top of that, he's giving us the magisterium. The magisterium are simply the, the teaching authority of church, the, the successes of the Twelve Apostles, our Lord built everything upon the Twelve Apostles. The Pope and Bishops of our time are simply the successors. So we call it the College of Bishops. And all of them have a teaching authority. They, what, what Christ says, he who listens to you, listen to me. Whatever you bind on earth, we bind. He, he, he gave that power to them and their successors. So, we have two sources of reference, the Bible and tradition, not one. This is what Luther did. Luther eliminated these two. And you can't do that. 
I'm condemning Luther. <laughs> I'm not condemning Luther. The Protestants, they just follow what the teacher did. It's, it's, it's not their fault. It's, it's like the chair that you are, the, the, the chairs that you sit. Suppose this is like a stool. And the stool has three legs. What happens when you take one leg off? Well, you're going to fall. In no point in trying to, 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 to sit on one leg. You might do two legs, but not, not one leg. He eliminated two legs. Um, now, we have a, a problem as well. Many of our theologian exegetes, they, 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 this is what some of them do. They don't look at the matter, what, what the church teaches. They don't look at the tradition. They only look at the Bible, and, and then they only look at part of the Bible. So, this, so not, you have a third of the, of the pie, and it's less than a third of the pie. So, so what, uh, uh, what, what is this? So uh, here I'm giving you a background to the Bible. Scripture has four senses. It's in our catechism. I remember when I was uh, a seminary, I went to a, a conference in the RCIA, and there was uh, one of the conferences given on scripture by a scripture scholar. I asked him, I, I said, does the church not use the four senses anymore? He says, no, he's wrong. He's a scripture scholar and he doesn't know. So, what does this mean? So we're not talking about a magisterium right now. We're not talking about the tradition. We're just looking at the Bible. In the Bible, we know, going back to the church fathers and the medieval uh, 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 scholars at today, and the church has always understood it, uh, that there are four senses that the, this is the word of God because the word of God is so rich that there are more than one meaning. That, in other words, it's not just a superficial, literal meaning. There are deeper levels. Okay, if, if, if I'm confusing you, let, let, let me explain. This is called the literal. It means whatever the, the, the text is saying. This is called the, the pardon me, the, the spiritual. And, and the word we use is senses. Literal sense or meaning. Call it meaning, if, if that's word. But the word we use it in, uh, uh, huh? Sure. I brought this so that I got this from China. Uh, Hong Kong. Uh, cost me about 10 cents. <laughs> Good prices. Took, took, took three months to get, though. Uh, <laughs> so, eat your heart out, by the way. <laughs> okay, so literal sense means, okay, say, um, it means whatever the author. So, say in a, in a book of, uh, what is it, the Exodus, uh, in, in a book of Exodus, when you talk about uh, Moses leading the, the people out. Actually, um, I wonder if I should use that one. I should use another one. Okay, I, I have a better one. Um, here I'm trying to point to something called typology. I'm going to explain typology afterwards. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, since I'm talking with this, do you remember the, the, the scene, and you and I uh, get it every year, uh, uh, true mass readings and so on. The scene when, um, when the Hebrew people were still in Egypt, and then the... Um, Angel of the, the destruction, uh, Passover, you call it the Passover, Passover, and killed all the firstborn. And so to, to protect the uh, Hebrew people, the Jewish people, Moses uh, had a message from God. So he said, take a lamb, okay? Sacrifice a lamb, kill a lamb, but take a lamb without blemish, no blemish, no marks. And then uh, sprinkle some blood on the um, doorpost and on the lintel. And then they roast the lamb, and then they would eat the lamb standing up and so on. Okay? Now that event, what actually took place, is the literal sense, the literal meaning. It's the, in this case, the historical meaning. In history, this event took place. But if you stay at that level, you're not going to get very far. That's very good for the Hebrew people, because they, they think the Messiah hasn't come. We know the Messiah has come. So, we know that this event is pointing to other things. It's pointing to Jesus, the allegorical, the moral, 
and the uh, uh, mole is everyday like allegor allegorical Jesus. This is Jesus, and the anagogical, which means in in heaven. Okay, so let, let, let me uh, illustrate this example. The event took place. All good and fine. It has a certain meaning. Then Jesus shows up, and John the Baptist sees him and says, "Behold." the Lamb, the real one of God. He has arrived. This Lamb that they were killing is a symbol of the real one, the Lamb of God, who's going to be sacrificed. And he's without blemish. He has no sin. And then he's sacrificed, and his blood is poured on us every time we have the sacraments and so on. When, when the priest says, I absolve you, the blood of Christ is sprinkled on you. And every time you go to Mass, you eat that lamb. That is the allegorical. It's pointing something far deeper. And then the moral, how, how you live that, and then, and so on. All of this, like crossing the Red Sea, is like, and into the Holy Land, is like crossing over to heaven. And all this, and then the moral is leaving behind Pharaoh and, and their practice of worshiping false gods and their, all, the, all the wrong and sin and so on, and leading to a new life in Christ and so on. That's the moral. All of this has deeper meaning. This is the best part. This, the spiritual meanings are the best part. And I'm, no, I'm, I'm not trying to, um, I'm not making this up. Cardinal Ratzinger, before he became Pope, talked about this. Uh, where the uh, scripture scholars are doing this. They're, they're leaving out the, 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 the three... You have to begin, always begin with the literal. You always begin with the historical meaning, but, but you don't stay there. There's, there's deeper meanings. Okay, so what does all this mean? I, I'll have to take this off. Um, I, I use two hands to save time. <laughs> So before we talk about lady in, Our Lady in, in the New Testament, and given that I have two hours for this session, that's a, we're, we're going. Uh, okay, uh, very quickly, Scripture. So the Bible is Scripture. Scripture is the Word of God. Okay? God will to have two forms of divine revelation, views up. One is a tradition, which is the everyday life and many things every day. One is in, in a... In a in, in, a, in a form which he's a principal author. So one of the documents in uh, um, Vatican II, it's one of the most beautiful ones. It's on divine revelation of the Bible and tradition and so on. It's called uh, Dei Verbum. And in, in Dei Verbum, when, when, when I, I use those three, the, 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 the stool with the three things, tradition, scripture, and medrasia, it's right in, the, in, 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 in that document. So one of the things it mentions is that there's a principal author And there's a secondary author. Primary or secondary or principal, whatever you want to say. Secondary author. In all the books, God is the principal author, and Mark, Matthew, Luke, and all these are the secondary authors. We have this, remember I said the mediation again? God uses the mediation of writers. It, 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 now, it's not, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the dictation. God didn't say to Mark, Mark, write this. No, it comes from interiorly, and it's, everything is Mark. It's fully 100% it's Mark and 100% God. But the God part is, is more important. And Mark wrote only what God wanted in his own way or whatever, and inspired from well, within. So deeply have they, have they become one, the, 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 the um, uh, sacred writer and, 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 and God. So the... The book, the Bible, is not many books. We use the word books. Book of Job, book of John, book of Revelation. And maybe they should, they, they should change the, the, the nomenclature, the naming. It's really one book because the primary author is the Holy Spirit, or God. It's one book. The Bible is one book with, with, with many chapters. So, so you, you, have, you have the book of Genesis. And the book of Revelation, something you also call the book of the Apocalypse. All right? It's one book with a developing story. 
Now, it's now any story. Let me use an old one. I, I'm betraying my, my age. Um, Romeo and Juliet, OK? <laughs> there are many characters. We call them protagonists. I mean, characters within the, the story. But the, and the story revolves really around two people, Romeo and Juliet. And everything, mom and dad and friends, all it is peripheral to the main part, right? In the history of salvation, and, and given in the Bible, there are two pr primary characters. And they introduce at the beginning, and they also conclude it. And the two primary characters is a child and woman. Those are the two principal characters. It's easy. The Jesus part is easy. Uh, because he's the son of God, the immediate, and he's everything. Of course he's the main character. But he has an assistant. And in the, in, in the understanding of theology, the primary meaning here is Mary. That's a primary. But it's also a secondary reference to the church. The woman is both Mary individually and corporately the church. It also has resonance of the church. Remember, scripture is rich. Here, the, the scholar says, the woman is first of all the church. And then second age, but it's also Mary. They show up at the beginning and end. Let the book ends. And all of the history of the, the thing has to do with child and woman, woman representing two. If you understand the centrality, much of the rest comes, uh, um, is easy. Now, this is the, the, the scripture is divided into the Old Testament before Jesus, New Testament with the Gospels, okay, Old Testament, New Testament. The church fathers have a principle. Everything in the Old Testament points towards Jesus and his death, sacrifice. Um, the, the, the word we use is typology. I, a type, a study of type, typology. Study of symbols of, um, it, it is a type symbols. It's a little bit like everything is waiting, preparing for, pointing to Jesus and his coming. And God can do that. Now we don't mean types just as, say the prophets, like say Christmas time, or uh, Easter, um, Good Friday and so on. You often use Isaiah. Isaiah talks about the coming of the Son of, uh, son of Man and different things. Prophecies are easy. God does have a prophet say something. But God can make people and events point toward Jesus as well. Moses is a type of Jesus. Jesus is like a second Moses. Jesus is a second Adam. Jesus is like, a, like the innocent Abel and so on. And events, like I said, the, the event of the um, God freeing the Hebrew people by the angel of death and all of those things, pointing towards Jesus, he can make all of that. So when, when you and I read scripture and, and we don't realize that this is happening, we, we don't fully under, understand scripture. So, the, the, so that everything, the, 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 what, what the church father says, the Old Testament prefigures, like they're figures of, the New Testament, and the New Testament fulfills, or they also say illustrates, the Old Testament. They, they, you know, there's part of scripture, I think maybe the Psalms, or something, deep calls upon deep, they, they, they're in sync. And, they, and, and there's a relationship with, with one another. The, the church fathers knew how to, knew how to, um, to, to use this. Okay. Why am I mentioning all of this? If you don't see this, if you don't understand that, that, that this is happening, when we talk about Mary in the Testament, you, you aren't going to get it. This, this scripture is, is being the word of God. Remember when, when you say the word of God, even though Mark, Matthew, and John and so on are writing these particular chapters as secondary authors, because it, it's still ultimately the word of God, we say that we use the word inspired. It means it's like written by the Holy Spirit, inspiration, written by inspiration. And it's inerrant, which it was in, no, in like no, no error. You cannot say in the Bible there's error because it's the word of God. But you have to try to understand what it means by, by no error. Remember, the Bible is special. 
It's the word of God. When you and I do meditation, the, our, print, our primary source should be scripture. It's the word, it's God himself. It's, uh, it's like Christ speaking to us when you, when, when you and I read scripture. But you have to go to the deeper levels of it. Now, um, what else was I, a typology? Da, 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 I use the um, image. Okay, Let, let's just go immediately to Our Lady in, in the New Testament. This time I have notes. <laughs> That. Voila. Okay. Um, now, how to understand? First of all, Our Lady doesn't show up till the time of Jesus, so she's not present in the Old Testament. However, you remember I said, if these are the two protagonists, the two main, like jo Romeo and Juliet in the story, and shows up here again, and, and it's developed all, all along, then what, what you should find, what, what you see with Jesus, that everything points towards Jesus. Well, guess what? Everything points towards the woman as well. Because those are two central characters. So not only Jesus. Jesus we know. The church fathers speak about it. So let me give you a, a, an example of the, of the, um, the church, how, how, how the church is anticipated. We consider understand Israel being the church in preparation already. And they have something like a baptism, which is their um, circumcision, and they have uh, something like the Bible, their Torah, and, and they're, they're, they, they have it's like the church in preparation. So without going to the whole story, uh, Israel was um, attacked, invaded twice. First, the Assyrians took over the 10 northern tribes and took them into captivity. And then they never came back to, as a group. And uh, so, so individually, they came back. Some of them came back. And then Jerusalem and another you know, that small tribe beside it, Benjamin, I forget the name of that, which, whichever tribe that was, was also captured by the um, Babylonians and taken into captivity. They came back as a group, some of them. All right? So, and God promised that he would restore the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, he never did, unless there's something deeper because when, notice what Jesus did. He called how many apostles? Twelve. I thought it was seven dwarves. <laughs> uh, okay. He, he called twelve apostles because they are the fulfillment of Israel. And he built the foundation on these twelve, as it were, tribes. That's an example of the, of the, the twelve tribes we fulfilled in the twelve apostles. That's an example. And I, I can go on and on. We're regarding, I can mention 10 or 12 points regarding the church, but we'll leave that. And, and it applies to Our Lady too. Many of the Old Testament things will find their fulfillment in Mary. So let me just go right into it. All right. I'm um, just noticing in, in, in the uh, New Testament, there are earlier writers and there are later writers. Earlier writers include Mark and Matthew. And they don't say much about Mary. It's a little bit like the early church when we talk when we do theology. Like the first few centuries, you don't talk about Mary that much until about 600s. And that's because at the beginning, they had to prove that Jesus is the Son of God, and Jesus is God and man, and then the church and so on. There's something more foundational, and then they get to Mary. There's something like that happening in the New Testament where you don't get to Mary until the later writers. So Mark and Matthew don't have much. When you get to Luke, Luke is later, especially John. John is even later, but, but Luke and John. So for Mary in the New Testament, um, what you want to look at primarily is Luke and John. Okay, let, let me take this off and put Luke and John. Uh, at my age, it's hard to bend. <laughs> So you, you're aware that we have four Gospels, four lives of Jesus. Three are similar. And they're like more like biographies with theological... Uh, you call Mark, Matthew, and Luke. John is different. John is much later, and he's different from all three. Uh, so we won't go into why he's, he's different. But I wonder, Luke is one of the synoptics and later. Luke was actually Greek origin, about background, more of Greek background than uh, the other apostle. Okay. Um, so we have Luke... 
And especially with Luke, you, you get the earlier part of our Lord's life. So let me just mention a few things. So, um, so let's look at a few of our Lord's... Um, okay, first of all, you look at the Annunciation. Annunciation. First of all, the, uh, I, I did a course on uh, uh, Mary, uh, a few courses, uh, and one of them were doing Mary in Scripture, and I was reading Luke, and this, this, this particular account of, the, of the, um, the appearance of the angel to Mary and the appearance of the angel to John the Baptist's father. I noticed they seemed to be parallel. So what I did was, I did, uh, I did two columns, right? There, there is um, uh, Jesus, uh, and there is John the Baptist, John, uh, um, and the prophecies. And you're parallel. I said, and I never knew, of course, the scholars knew this. I didn't know it. I said, interesting. And it's not by um, uh, coincidence. Luke obviously intended it. And so what, what he wanted, so first thing, he, he wants to, uh, as background, he wanted to say that there are two annunciations. There, there, there are two mi miraculous uh, annunciations. And when, when, when the angel appears, there's something big is going to happen. And so they're both miraculous, except notice the contrast. Mary's in the Jewish culture, nobody. She's about 14 years old, whatever, whatever age she was. She didn't have much status as a, a woman in, within the Jewish culture and so on. The other one is a man, grown man. Uh, what's, what's John the Baptist's father again? Zechariah. Zechariah. See what I mean? <laughs> Zechariah. And he's a priest. He's powerful. <laughs> and yet he lacked faith. And Mary's the one. So um, the angel um, made him mute for a number of months until the, the, child is, the time the child is to be born. And Mary said, you know, the word Mary, and yet the contrast. There's a new, there's a new economy. There's a new uh, standard that's going to happen with Mary. Everything is going to be turned upside down. Now, w w w w without going into it, this is so, such a big event. Remember, the Son of God is becoming man. That is packed with Old Testament stuff. And uh, in, the, in the Old Testament, what you see is marvelous or miraculous birth. Let me use the Canadian, this one, marvelous. So let me just tell you very, very quickly. We find a number of miraculous words. One includes Zechariah, right? Remember, um, Elizabeth was barren. She was old and barren. She couldn't give children. If, if, if one of you women would give birth at 70 years old, that would, that would be a big miracle, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, but also, Samson, remember the, the angel, and the, and the wife and the mother was also barren, and the Abraham's wife was also barren. They were all barren. All miraculous births. And all of them have a sequence of, 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 of what happens. So, um, apparition, angel appears. And then the person who's received messages is thrown off because of this miraculous event. And then there's a message from the angel. And then it says, well, like Mary, well, um, how will this happen? Because I don't, I don't know man. You know, I don't you know, have a husband. And so on. And then uh, you, there will be a sign. So, in the history of Israel, there has been these miraculous things of a great, so think of, think of Samson. God is preparing a certain, like a Messiah, a certain savior for the people. Well, this is the big one, the savior of all saviors. Can, can you see how big this is? Now, there, there's also, um, so it, it's fulfilling, these things happen in the Old Testament, except this is a big one, and the big one has all of them uh, that, that's happening. Um, the, 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 the other one is the, it, it's a scheme of a call. In, in the Old Testament, God every so often would call people like a Moses. Um, um, one was Gideon to save the people, again, like a savior. This is a call because the, 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 the savior of all saviors is God. Um, Gideon was supposed to, um, um, he showed up and these enemies used to come and uh, bring all of their livestock and, and devastate all of their, their crops and everything. And the angel appears to Gideon and says, you are to save the people and so on. And then he asks for two signs, all that. No. You, you have the, the structure of a call, what happens when the angel calls for great mission. 
this also fulfills this. There, there's also an uh, apocalyptic schema, but I'm not going to go into that. that that's too complicated. Uh, of very end times, you know, kind of events and so on. The, the, the greatest one is the covenant schema. Now, this may confuse you. For the Israelites, the greatest pact, the thing that they, makes them who they are, because they made a covenant 50 days out of, um, uh, I think it's 50 days, out of um, um, Egypt, on Mount Sinai, they made a pact with God. It, it defined who they would be, they were the people of God, people of Yahweh. It's, it's the covenant they made. This has the... the um, um, the, 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 if, if you look at the, the, uh, the Annunciation, the Angel of the Ministry of Mary has that uh, sense of, of, of making a call. Um, the, the, the one who talks about this one is a famous Mariologist. His name is Aristide Serra. He's one of the finest in the world. He teaches at the, the most important Marian Institute in the world called the Marianum. All of these things that you find in the Old Testament, the biggest one, Fulfillment is taking place all in one event. Now, it may not be clear. Let, 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 let me go to the visitation and then become, some, become a little clearer. That's, that's if um, Vicky gives me the time. Okay. Visitation has two parts. Well, maybe three parts. Uh, let, let's call it the, 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 the dialogue. So you have Mary and you have, um, what's her name, Elizabeth. Now, you probably weren't aware of this. What kind of chalk do you have? <laughs> <laughs> I need a drink. <laughs> OK. I, I didn't notice, and I assume most of you or all of you don't notice. There's a parallel between this text with um, David bringing Ark to Jerusalem. Um, these, these are some of the perils. It's the same region, same area of Judah. Um, and then what, what, what happens when um, Mary comes? The, the child jumps in, uh, in a womb. And, and with David, David was dancing half naked in front of the thing with joy, you know? The word used there, the word for that jumping is only time it's used in the Old Testament. That's why I read somewhere. Only shows up in that one event with uh, David. That one word. In addition, uh, there's a certain fear. Um, um, with, with, with David is because um, when um, somebody touched the Ark of the Covenant, God slayed uh, one or two people who ever touched the, the Ark. And so David left the Ark of the Covenant with a family. And how long did they stay with the family? Three months. How long did Mary stay with Elizabeth? Three months. What did the Ark, you know for the um, Israelites, the Ark of the Covenant, yeah, if you watch the movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark, um, by Spielberg, it, it, that, that's what you're talking about, that, that ark. Well, um, it's the most sacred thing. The most sacred thing they have is a temple. The most sacred part of the temple is the Holy of Holies, the, the sanctuary, the innermost sanctuary. And, and what, what makes it holy is the Ark of the Covenant. It, it's a golden box. Like, like you, you see, I, I think they, they probably put a very... Um, uh, um, true to what, what it looked like, uh, very, very similar to these, um, what it looked like, the actual ark. And the one who showed in the movie, Raiders of Lost Ark. It contains primarily the two tablets of Moses, the Torah, the Word of God in stone. Mary had the Word or the Son of God in flesh. She had the real Word. And then it had a piece of bread, manna, which is bread from heaven. Jesus is the bread of he true bread of heaven. She is a fulfillment of the Ark of the Covenant. This was the most sacred thing, the greatest thing for the, for the Hebrew people. 
And Mary, and it's nothing compared to, to what Mary is. She has the real word of God. That's why we say in the litany, like the litany of Loreto, house of gold, ark of the covenant, morning star. That's why she's the ark. Can, can you see how it's fulfilling? This is, what well, the Old Testament is nothing compared to the reality as the church father. Okay, so, so, so she, she's the ark of the covenant. Now, notice what Mary says. Remember, remember, now Mary is moved by the Holy Spirit. The words come from the Holy Spirit. My soul magnifies, I, I mentioned that. Now notice, there's a new order. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, the kings and the great uh, generals, and raises up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, the rich has sent away empty. In this new order, Barry Christ, everything is going to be upside down, reversed. It's not the powerful or great in heaven. It's the little ones. There's a new order, and she is the image, especially of this new order. Now, notice what Elizabeth says. Now, I forget, I, I meant to look it up, exactly what she says. She says, how is it that I'm worthy that the mother of my Lord comes to me? The Lord can mean to me, it means God, it can also mean king. So let me use Bathsheba. You know, Bathsheba is the mother of King David. Bathsheba would call David Lord because he's king. When Bathsheba, as in one of the scenes, comes before David, she does whatever reverences he do for the king. When, when it's her son, Solomon, is on the throne, it's the son who gets up in acknowledgement of his mother. Mary is the ultimate queen mother. She's the mother of that son. Then it says, um, how is that worthy? Blessed is she who believed. Mary, before she gave birth, conceived of the Son of God in a womb, she already conceived the Son of God in her heart. That, that's the main part. She was already a disciple of Christ, disciple of God or whatever. That's the main thing. She had the main part first, before she did the biological part. St. Augustine speaks about this. Then, blessed is she who believes. In the Old Testament, there's another version of that, and I, I have it, yeah. Um, there was the, oy. no, no, we, we started, uh, uh, we started at M45, right? <laughs> um, um, there was, in the Old Testament, there's uh, a, a, a wonderful, uh, courageous woman called Judith. The Assyrian and the, and, and the um, commander, the, the general, I guess, Hall of Fairness, and there are many paintings on this, um, came to devastate that, their town city. She was a widow, a beautiful widow. She took off her ordinary clothing and dressed herself up, and she went out intentionally to be captured and brought before the general, who kind of like fell in love with her, you know, um, you know, um, uh, and then he wanted to possess her kind of thing. And so there's one time where, so he was trying to make her drunk or something, and he drank too much, and she cut off his head, and she put it in a bag, and she secretly got out of the camp and, and, and brought the head to, the, uh, to this, um, this guy, uh, Uzziah. Maybe, I don't know if he's head of the town or something. She saved her people. And this is what he said to her. O daughter, meaning Judith, you are blessed by the Most High above all women uh, and, on, uh, and on earth. And blessed be God who did this and so on. She is like the ultimate Judith. What she did would be give us the Savior who will save all of us. Can, can, can you see all the resonances? If, if, remember, these are intend, intended. Remember, the primary author is not Luke. The primary author is God. I, I remember, I, I, I tell you this, I, I digress society. When I was newly ordained, I, I ran into then Father... Tom Collins, not the drink. <laughs> okay, uh, our Archbishop. He was giving a retreat from, and he was there um, as a priest of the uh, rector or something of the, um, uh, in London, um, St. Peter's Seminary. I said, because I had written a paper when I was a seminary, and I'd written a really Old Testament like Isaiah, you know, I thought I was suffering servant. And I mentioned uh, this is uh, like a, a prophecy, whatever, prefiguration of Christ to come and so on. 
my uh, scripture writer, and he is from Regis Gosso, he said, you can't do that. You know, you, you can't. So, and I mentioned my uh, spiritual writer I had for a year because my own spiritual, my own spiritual was away and I, had, I took someone else. And he was an Old Testament scripture. He said, uh, that, that professor is right. So I brought him from Colonel Collins. I said, because to me it doesn't make sense. And he says, yes. Maybe Isaiah didn't know exactly what he was saying, but a primary author is the Holy Spirit, and he knew what he was saying. <laughs> you know, um, all right. So uh, let's go into um, let's go into number three. Without going into it, will be um, the temple. A Simeon and so on in a temple. Sorry? Did I say? The presentation. Presentation of Mary. Um, yeah, that, this, is a, this is the presentation. Not presentation, presentation of Jesus. Uh, Simeon and temple. Okay, so. Um, Notice, I mean, there's more than one thing, but let me just use one. Um, it extends the salvation now to the Gentiles. He'll be a light to the Gentiles and the glory of the people of Israel. This was Simeon. So she, goes to, she and Israel, Joseph goes to the temple with, with a, a child, Jesus, and uh, Simeon stops them and he says, Lord, you can let, I, I keep saying this at the seminary to my rector, Lord, um, you can let your servant go now. I'm ready to be retired. But they never, they, they never listen to me. I, I'm going to show them my birth certificate. I, 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 might, I might convince them. So it's extended. Something great is happening. It's not just Israel now. God going to save Israel. It's going to save all people. The non-Jews we call Gentiles. So all peoples. And then he prophesies the coming sufferings of our Lord. He'll be a, a sign of contradiction. He'll be, he'll be opposed. And a sword will pierce your heart too. They go together. The son and the mother. Their sufferings will go together. Judge, yes, sir. Um, I, I, I'm not going to stop there because that, that one is not as important. Let me go to um, the finding of, of, of Jesus in the temple. So... Um, Okay, finding, finding a temple. Here you also see resonances of the passion of Christ on Calvary. But before we do that, all right. Um, so you, 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 you know the story. Um, age of 12, annually the family goes to the temple. I, I guess this is uh, 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 Passover uh, time. And uh, this time, uh, as they're going home, they probably assume Jesus was with the cousins or something. And after a day out, they find he's not there. And he'd never done anything like that before. So they come back and after three days, finally they found Jesus in the temple. And it's amazing. Um, there's something going on there. Because they were astonished by his wisdom, 12 years old. N notice there's something great about Jesus. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to ask God about this if, if I ever meet him when I die. You see, if I go to the other place, then I, I won't be. But the, <laughs> so, um, uh, it, obviously, it seems that Jesus is full of zeal, even as a boy, full of, of his father's will to do, to, to do God's work. The, 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 the key part here is that it's pointing towards Calvary. Okay? It's, 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 here, it's, it's anticipating Calvary. Remember, many of these details, if, if they happen individually, one, just one case of it, you think it's a coincidence. But when you see it over and over again, and Luke is doing it over again, you know Luke is intending you, you and me uh, to, to, to see this. So, what do we see first? Where do both events take place? Calvary and, um, and this finding a temple? Jerusalem. Uh, wh how long did it, each one last? Three days. Yeah. You know, three days to find Jesus, three days, Good Friday, third day, um, resurrection, and so on. Both are marked by Jesus saying, about Father's will, 
Mother says, son, did you not know we are about, we're worried about you? Mother, did you not know I must be about my father's will? And then he says, um, he, he said in different ways, and God of Gethsemane, let not, not my will, but your will be done on the cross. Father, into your hands, and sit in serenity to his will, and so on. And also, both include non-comprehension. There's something that Mary won't get here. There's something divine taking place, because she's his mother, but we're going to a divine level now to his divine father. There's a certain distancing that, 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 that is um, um, uh, taking place. Okay. Um, so when, when you put all of those things together, you realize there's a lot of things happening where Mary, Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment, of course, but she, she's a, the child and woman. She's a woman who is fulfilling many of these. A marvelous birth, a call for mission. Uh, let's leave it. Um, she's making like a new covenant instead of Sinai in her home in Nazareth. She's the Ark of the Covenant and all of these things, uh, the inversion of the new order, Mary, um, the Queen Mother and all of these things. And then uh, both of these things are pointed to, 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 to the great event, um, Calvary and so on. So fortunately, I have another 45 minutes. So um, <laughs> uh, let's go quickly to John. Um, is this helpful? Yes. yes. Should I stop now? No. no. <laughs> you missed the third one, birth of Jesus. Okay, birth, birth is, is sort of contained in, 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 in the Annunciation birth, like, like the, the marvelous birth and so on. Besides which, you know, Buddha is not that important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to John. Now, John is interesting. Uh, one scripture scholar, and I can't remember his name, he had, he had, I know it's an Italian name, he said, it's almost as if John built his gospel around Mary. So, oh, I forgot, there's an important one with Luke. Um, uh, our lady won't forgive me if I forgot this one. <laughs> Luke, we understand Luke to have written not only the gospel of Luke, but also the Acts of the Apostles. And one of the first things the Acts of the Apostles is Pentecost. And guess who was there? Yeah. Our Lady. Um, let me mention this as I'm thinking about it because I have a gift for it. Um, Prince Bernardo Clairvaux or someone like that says, in a, in a, a, a kind of a, a text, he says, Mary, the angel of Gabriel has asked you to say yes. Please say yes. Do it now. Don't be modest. Don't be uh, humble and all. Be say yes. Otherwise, you, we won't be saved. In order for God to come, become a man, he needed two, there are two requirements. He is purity itself. So he could only come into a vessel that was pure and sinless. And Mary was the only one who was like that. But God isn't, isn't just like blessing us, it's a, it's a relationship. It's a, like a, a man saying to a woman, like Romeo said, Juliet, Juliet, Mary. No, you know? <laughs> well, no marriage, so sorry. <laughs> it takes two. And it has to be, God is saying, I want to marry you, us. And Mary is the only one who could give a full yes. You know, I do. And she said yes for us. And, and because of her, we have the Holy Spirit coming down the first time. And then the Son of God being born and given to us. Now Jesus dies and wins for us the Holy Spirit. And Mary's prayers are more powerful than all the angels and saints. <laughs> One prayer, more powerful. That's one of the, uh, part of our teaching. Guess whose prayer brought the Holy Spirit down the second time pri primarily? It's Mary again. Mary's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Mary got us the, 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 the Son of God, and she, in a sense, she got us the Holy Spirit as well. The, the, um, okay, well, there's a lot we can say about that. Let's go over to John. Okay, so there's the Gospel of John. So at the beginning of the gospel, I, I stuck on the Trinity, we're talking about the prologue. Then where does she show up again? The beginning of his ministry, let's go here, Cana. Then where does she show up again? The, um, at the cross, Calvary. At, at, the, at the defining moment. And then where does she show up? In heaven. The woman with the 12 stars. So these three come from the gospel. This one comes from the book of Revelation, which we understand to be written by John. The book of, also called the book of the apocalypse. Now this one, the woman is mentioned, but it doesn't say much about Mary. 
But it does speak about something. Oh, um, depends on how much extra time uh, she gives me. But uh, you have to know, in the beginning of the Gospel of John, there is a, a second creation account. In the Genesis, what does it say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then it speaks about the separation of the light and darkness and all this. This one. He goes right into the Trinity. He talks about the Father and, and the Son and the Son. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was a God. He says, in the beginning, he talks about the Trinity first, the source. And, and, and nothing was created except through the Son, the Word, creation. And the world was in darkness, and he was the light of the world. You're thinking, that it's, it, 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 scholars clearly see this. It's meant to be a second creation account. But now, a divine, it refers to a woman, a woman meaning Mary, giving birth from God, not, not, from, uh, uh, not from Joseph. Uh, it's a, uh, the Holy Spirit will overshadow her. A, a new kind of birth, but, 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 but that, uh, her birth, which, which we call the virgin conception, or whatever you call it, virgin conception and so on, is an anticipation of the baptism and born not of man or blood and all, not, not the human birth, another higher birth. Mary makes this possible with Jesus. And nowadays, uh, talking about a higher birth, which is a birth of baptism. Now, we got, we got the Cana. And Cana is, is packed with, with the things. Cana, one of the things it is, is, is more than one thing. It's an, um, a model of what Mary does for us. That's what. It's also an anticipation of what Calvary, uh, is, uh, there's an uh, anticipation of Calvary as well. It, 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 it does several things. Okay, so we, we have this Cana event. Jesus goes to uh, uh, a wedding, and his, some of the apostles were there, the ones he had, and uh, Mary and Mary were there. Now, it could be a distant cousin or something like that. They ran out of wine. Now, in that culture, to run out of wine is very embarrassing. If you had a wedding for, your, for yourself or for your daughter, and you run out of food, <laughs> it's like me when, when you come at, at Mass and, I, and we don't have any more Eucharist. <laughs> um, it's very embarrassing. Guess who notices? Mary notices, because she has a big heart. Because she's probably, and I suspect, and I'll find out this in the next slide, I suspect that couple was, uh, was poor because they didn't have enough wine and they had a cheaper wine. But anything that Jesus converts is going to be better than anybody else's wine. Anyways, but, so I suspect you were poor and she, and she was looking out for it. And that's when you and I are in trouble. She's looking out for us. She's aware of it. And what does she do? My daughter, my son is in trouble. She doesn't tell Jesus what to do. She knows Jesus has a, a, a heart far greater, more loving than she does. I, I, now notice he says something. M mother, oh no, I can't remember, is it, is it a woman here or mother? Woman. woman? woman. It, he's talking about the universal woman again. He's giving her a new title again. Um, what does this have to be with you and me? My, like my hour has not yet come. Hour means his hour of his death, which is always for him, his glorification. So. So, in other words, my daddy had a, has a schedule, and it's not time yet. <laughs> so, she's not going to say anything. She just tells the servants, do whatever he tells you. Well, he, now, he's a good Jewish boy. He, he, uh, Jewish boys always obey their mothers. <laughs> Even if daddy had a different IR plan, okay? This is an idea. Whatever Mary wants, she gets. There's no one on earth who has loved Jesus protected him, uh, done everything for him as Mary has, not even Joseph. The way she protected him on the way to Egypt, worried about him and everything, when he, worried when he grew up, she, she did no one has loved Jesus. And he loves his mother. And he never says no to Mary. They, they, this is an example. But they, 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 there's more going on there. The, 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 the jars of water at the Old Testament, purification jars, that's part of their... Um, you know, their, their, their religion, as it were. Um, their, Jesus transformed it. And he's pointing to, well, two things. He's pointing to the Eucharist, the, the blood of Christ, we, we have in the Mass. He's also pointing to his death, the blood from his death. 
like the blood from his side, represent the Eucharist and so on, is pointed to that as well. Um, before I, I mention how it's pointed to, notice something. In Mary's asking for this, the disciples believed. The disciples believed in Jesus because of something Mary asked for. And Mary will, will, will obtain faith for us as well. But there, 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 there are um, several things going on with the, um, with the, um, the um, something that, 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 that's pointing to the cross. So the wine represented the blood of Christ kind of thing. It, it's also on, it, it happens on the third day, I believe. Uh, the, 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 there's something over three days. These are uh, pointing my hour. Our, our John means his cross. Okay. Um, but but there, 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 there are certain parallels that are all pointing towards the cross. So um, Mary didn't realize it, but when, when she asked him to do the miracle, the first miracle would be beginning of his march towards his death. Um, now, uh, scripture scholars also see this. In what she's asking, in her words to the, um, to the, to the stewards, Sinai is being fulfilled again, like, like we, we saw earlier. Here's what happened in two texts of, of, um, uh, of, of, of Sinai. Exodus 19.18. When Moses, whoever it was, uh, uh, said, you know, this is what God, Yahweh is asking you. They said, what Yahweh has said, we will do. And then later on, in our, our five chapters later, Exodus 24, three, do, uh, well, something's wrong here, three, uh, three or so, what Yahweh has commanded, we will do. And Mary says similar words, do whatever he tells you. So it, it, this is, a, okay, this is, let me just read this. So here we're, de we're dealing again, with, like, like with Luke, a renewal of the same covenant. And John is presenting Cana as a new Sinai, in which the figures have been replaced. Mary's role is to represent the, the people of Israel, the eschatological ultimate people, in which John puts on Mary's lips the profession of the people at Sinai and so on. So all of this is happening. The scholars are seeing this. And I mentioned the Paschal perspective. Um, okay. Now, uh, two things. Uh, we're over, so I know Vicky wants me to say stop right now and I, I, I leave out this important thing. She says 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, at, at, at the cross, I already talked about the cross at the beginning. Well, I, I, we already explained that. Notice, so Mary has a, um, a representative role, a mother of all his, his, uh, the church, and, and John, John represents the church, and Mary becomes the mother, and so on. Notice what John does. John, Scripture says, takes her into his home. The word in, in, in the Greek is ta, ta idea, which means among his possessions. Christ has given one of his greatest gifts, his mother, his own mother to be our mother. And what does he do? He takes her into his home, into his heart, into his life. And John representing us, and that's what you and I have to do, is, 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 is to bring her into life. Notice something else is happening. One of the other schemas that happened in the Old Testament is, is a schema of, um, of um, revelation. So let me, let me give you two uh, quick examples. John sees Jesus and he reveals Jesus to everyone. Behold the Lamb of God. You guys don't want to realize it. I'm going to reveal this. Behold the Lamb of God. And Jesus, when he sees Nathanael, Nathanael is one of, became one of the apostles. He says, here is a true Israelite. And uh, without guile and so on. And then Nathan says, how, how did you know me? You know, because he was revealing him to everyone. And Jesus is revealing something to, to us now. Here is your son. Here is your mother. It's, it's a revelation. Now, finally, um, um, she says, five more minutes, yes, okay. Um, very quickly. The book of Revelation. You know, for the Hebrew people, the um, Ark of the Covenant is the main thing. You know, uh, in one of the um, invasions by the you know, invaders, they, they, they hid the Ark of the Covenant to, to, to protect it. And, and, and at the end of a, a chapter, uh, I'm chapter, uh, chapter 10, I think, it mentions, John says, I see the Ark of the Covenant. So imagine, I read this from Scott Hahn or something. The, imagine how excited a, a Jewish reader would be, the Ark of the Covenant. 
And then he stops, he just stops abruptly like that, uh, just like that, just mentioned, I saw the outcome, and he goes, and then he begins the, um, he, he, he begins the beginning of, uh, sorry, it was chapter, end of chapter 11, uh, chapter 12, um, chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. I, and I saw a woman crowned with 12 stars, with, with, with uh, br uh, shining brightly with the sun and the beauty and the stars and all of these things. That, the Ark of the Covenant, Our Lady. You see, John gets it. But the Ark is also the church, primarily the church here. Now, what, what the, the distinction between here and, and the and, and thing is, where the book of Revelation talking about the child, you're talking about the child, um, especially with Mary, as, as the human birth of, of Jesus. Here we're talking about a different birth. A birth of the church coming from the, the, that child who's on the cross and giving birth to us. So when, when, he spe when he speaks of the attacks and the, the birth pangs, it means the birth pangs of the church. But it also means Mary birth pangs as, that, that's, you know, like, um, the, I haven't experienced this being a man, <laughs> but uh, my, my, my sisters, I have four of them, they tell me it's very painful. You know? uh, <laughs> they say that it's a little bit painful. <laughs> so, uh, and that's her birth pangs. So it's the birth pangs, both of the church, because of Jesus' uh, very arduous death and so and, and, and the, and the, and the, and the birth of Jesus. So if, if you're confused by that, un understand that. So the, the child that refers to the child, the birth, and also our ladies uh, are suffering, but it's also, it also refers to our lady. And the, and the dragon and all of that, talking about Satan, the dragon, the ancient serpent, meaning the serpent for ancient from Genesis. That's the, that, that's the devil. And there's a lot more, but um, um, I, I can see um, Vicky's giving me that dirty, that dirty look. <laughs> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Father, Son. Well, have a good uh, day. And... What? The grace? I, I, only Jesus can give grace. In nomine Patris, et Filii, Spiritus. Benedict Domini, Hector, Dona, Creator, Lagitaris, Sumo, Sumturi, Per Christum Domini Nostrum. In only part, you should feel the Spirit of Sanctity. Oh, um, should I make an announcement now about my uh, retirement? Uh, um, okay, so we're supposed to have adoration at 12.45, even though I, I finished late. Um, so I'll expose, and then we'll have benediction. Now, I, I think I'm having lunch down here. If any of you have questions, always come and see me. During the adoration, um, after I expose and before I do the final benediction, if people had questions and they wanted to see me briefly, it wouldn't be confession, just briefly, questions, and I, short, because uh, three minutes or so or whatever.